This is Two Chicks Talking Flicks, where we review movies, love them or hate them. Someone's got to do it. So enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Sarah, and this is Two Chicks Talking Flicks and anything else that gets in the mix. It's also (laughs) flirting with 40. Hi, Sarah. (laughs) Hi, how are you? Good. Um, so we have been off air for our flirting with 40 podcast and I haven't released any episodes for two chicks talking flicks because I have been going through a lot, a lot. Um, I know you've been going through some shit. So, um, (laughs) this is... You know, this is 40. This is what happens. Um, you get to a certain age and your life just falls apart. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you came here for uh, a movie review or um, to hear about life from a, the perspective of 40-year-olds, <laughs> that is not what you're going to get today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe a little bit, but... Um, so at least probably maybe the 40 year old aspect. I don't know yeah. about the flick part. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll talk about a movie. I don't know. Um, who knows where I'm going to go, but so we started our flirting with 40 podcast because both of us were turning 40 this year and we had both independently had had an idea of what we wanted to do while we were turning 40 and um in january we had come up with a with a a podcast idea you and i and uh we didn't really implement it until later in the year and um i have had <laughs> like i don't know if it's the worst year cuz obviously people in other countries right now they're having their their own stuff um so i don't want to say that i'm having like the world's worst day because I'm not, but I thought this was going to be the greatest year that I've had. Cause I, I didn't want to turn 40. I was very just like, Ugh, I'm going to be 40. That sucks. What about you? Where were you at on that? I mean, I didn't really think of it as the best or the worst. Um, I mean, so, I mean, technically, the divorce happened before I turned 40. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, and I haven't turned so, 40 yet. I will be 40. Yeah. I'm just flirting with it. Yeah, you're just flirting with it. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's been, whether you want to call it 2023 or my 40th year or whatever, It's been um, probably one of the most difficult. Yeah. But also, I wouldn't say one of the... I feel like next year is going to be better. my best year up to this point. Yeah, so (laughs) ours started off on such a high. Like, um, independently, we had met before... Um, but we both were going to this conference in Florida. I didn't know you were going. You didn't know that I was going until like right before we were actually going to it. And um, one thing that I, and I we talked about this in our first episode a little bit, but one thing that I'd always wanted to do was go to Disney. And because we were going to Florida for this con, uh, convert, uh, convention, convention um, I was able to go to Disney. That was one thing that was like the biggest thing besides going to Europe that has been on my bucket list since I heard about what Disney is. Right. That's such a high. And then the next month I got a dog and then we got another dog and it was like just a high. And then come April, uh, my grandpa died and then my friend um, got diagnosed with cancer and it was stage four cancer. 
And but then her numbers started to go better. And then my mom died. <laughs> so I had like and then after that, if if you know that wasn't crazy enough, my favorite baseball team won the World Series. And I just I don't know what to do with this year. Like it has brought so much joy. But it has also brought so much pain and heartache. And I just, I, I'm, I'm at a loss. And, um, like, I'm sure you feel the same way with things are going right, but things are also going wrong for you. And it's just like, Grr. Yeah, and you're wearing a Texas Ranger shirt I right now. Am. That's the team. We're, so maybe that was like, um, I bet in a way that was like a nice high. But then the fact that both your mom and grandpa, because didn't you watch the games with them? Yeah. So um, my grandpa, I'm sorry, I'm going to cry, guys. Um, my grandpa, actually, I watched the very first game the season with him. Um, and then two days later, he was dead. And then my mom, she watched every single game until like the third to last game of the season and the day she died was the second to last game of the season and uh at least they won uh but it was like a very weird bookend to this crazy season and then they won the world series and it's just like what has happened that is something that the two of them wanted so badly and i've i've In 2011, when they didn't win the World Series, I was crushed. Um, I actually was waiting in line two days in a row at Academy to get a shirt for the World Series because I just knew they were going to win. And um, when they made it in 2010, we were just so excited that they made it. Like they beat the Yankees. That was like something that they had tried several times before and they didn't beat them. And so when we beat the Yankees to go to the World Series for the first time in 2010, that felt like we won the World Series, even though we didn't. Um, So the next year when they were even better and they were one out away from winning the World Series twice in one game and they didn't do it. And I had to go home empty handed without the shirt. I had to leave the long line and go home, I was crushed. And then the next day they had lost. I was devastated. But I didn't cry. I wasn't upset that way. I was just so, I was just like, man, that really sucks. And it did suck. Um, But I cried when I thought the Rangers were not going to win because my mom wanted them to win so bad for my grandpa. And, uh, I was just so upset that she didn't get to be there. Like when they won, I was bawling happy tears, but also sad tears that she didn't get to see it. He didn't get to see it. Well, you know, okay. If you think people in heaven, you know, can see stuff, um, then yeah, they saw it, but they weren't here. And it, I didn't get to see her see it. And, um, so it's, it's been a bit and I had to take a break because she loved me doing podcasts. She loved it. Yeah. I would imagine that that would be difficult. Um, since that was such a important thing for them. Yeah. And an important thing for you to like be with them when that happened. And then for them to have both, you know, passed away basically, you know, very shortly before this happened. And didn't, oh, it like, did part of you, I mean, obviously you were happy and excited that they won, but was part of you kind of like wishing maybe they hadn't because? Uh, no, no. Um, okay. I wanted them to win because I, I wanted to make sense. You know, like if you're going to throw all this shit at me, like at least let the Rangers win, you know, just selfishly I guess maybe I don't know but it was something that like bonded me my dad and my sister sitting there watching every game and just hoping that they were gonna win 
And then they did, mm-hmm. and it was so fantastic. And, uh, you know, for just a moment, when they won, it it's like she wasn't dead, you know? It just... <laughs> And then obviously you realize like, oh crap, no, she is dead, uh, obviously. Um, Unfortunately, so my grandpa died on April Fool's Day, which is just an awful day for someone to pass away. Like, um, what are you talking about? What do you mean he's sick? Like, that's crazy. Because two days before this, he was coming home. That's that's weird. Um, And then my mom died on my best friend's birthday. So (laughs) it's like. It's just what is happening is very strange. And and they both kind of like died unexpectedly kind of, right? Like it just, they just kind of got sick really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So with my mom, it was unexpectedly unexpected. Um, She has been sick since I was born. Um, Wow. And there's been many times where it was a close call that she wasn't going to live. Um, she had autoimmune hepatitis. Um, she had liver disease, basically. She had liver disease. Uh, it wasn't from drinking. It wasn't from anything like that. It's just her body was rejecting her liver. Um, but for the most part, after I was real young, once I was out of elementary school, she didn't really have problems after that for many, many years. Um, or at least nothing that we had to gather the family to say our goodbyes. Um, that happened a couple times as a kid. And then uh, it didn't happen again until I want to say 2012 was like the next, maybe 2011, somewhere around there. Um, she had gotten knee surgery and, uh, because of that, she'd gotten cellulitis and um, the knee surgery, like the knee surgery went fine, but the afterwards it, it got kind of wonky and, um, you know, they thought maybe she might pass away then, but she, she came back. She was fine. Um, it wasn't until two years ago that really they like called in. Um, the people were like, you should get everybody here because we don't think she's going to make it. And then she did and everything was fine and she'd been fine until like a couple days before she passed. Um, her body just couldn't do it anymore. And, uh, Mm -hmm. I guess she technically died of cardiac arrest. Um, Mm -hmm. but it was due to. A multitude of other things so yeah it's just real weird like when I feel like when I was a kid and someone would die my mom would be upset she'd be sad she'd be crying but she didn't really like shut shut away and and I feel like when people have kids they just keep going you know like yeah. you just keep going Um, You don't really stop to mourn or to be sad or, you know, you're sad, but you're not like staying in bed doing nothing because you're, you know, so-and-so died. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when you lose a parent as in like, I I don't have kids. Um, So I was still really close to my parents. I saw them all the time and it just like, I'm not at home sitting in bed crying every day. I'm crying right now, but I've I've been pretty good until now. Um, Like, I I still think I'm processing it. Um, Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just feels like she's not home. (laughs) Because there was times where she would be at the hospital for months at a time. um, Or rehab facility getting her strength back from being in a hospital for a while. So it it's just a lot of firsts are going to happen really soon. You know, first Thanksgiving, first Christmas, first her birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, my grandpa and her and myself all have birthdays within days of each other in mm-hmm. December. 
so that one's gonna be pretty pretty difficult I think so yeah I just wanted to take some time and to uh, like like I said before one of her favorite things was to listen to my podcast she was our biggest listener Um, oh and now I don't I don't have her to talk to about it or to hear her thoughts on whatever we said. And it just sucks because my dad and my sister, they love me, but they don't really listen to the podcast. And um, they're just, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just different. And I like to show her my creative things that I make and do and whatever. And I don't have that now. So mm-hmm. I'm sure, you know, not having your, uh, spouse it's not the same he didn't die but you know it's it's like a death it's a death of a friendship it's a death of a partnership like mm-hmm. how has that been yeah I mean it is I feel like it is kind of and it I think it's different in a way because it's like you know that they're still out there and you wonder like, well, what are they doing and what are they up to? And like, but yeah, it's the death of a marriage. Like, um, it's not, I mean, when anyone gets married, they don't think they're going to get divorced or, I mean, that's not part of the plan. Uh, and we had been married so long, 18 years. So this will be my, also, my first Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and we had gotten married on New Year's Day. So oh, my wow. first, like, we would have been married 19 years this coming January 1st. So, and then his birthday is in January. <laughs> and so it'll be, like, a bunch of stuff kind of back-to-back. That'll be the first, um, you know, season and birthday and holiday and stuff without him. Um Technically, I've already had my first birthday because yeah. we were already divorced by the time I turned 40 this year. Um, but yeah, so it'll be interesting. I feel like Thanksgiving and Christmas might not be. Can you hear my dog barking? Yeah, it's fine. I just sat <sighs> here and had snotty nose and was crying. Like, <laughs> Um, (laughs) let me, he's wanting his toy just knocked over so he can get, okay, hopefully he'll be fine now. So I think Thanksgiving and Christmas should be fairly okay just because I'm going to be around family and stuff. Yeah. But like, I think New Year's is going to be the issue because one, we don't really do anything as a family for New Year's, so I won't really be around anyone. Two, there will be no one to kiss at midnight. <laughs> and three, it's our anniversary, which is obviously even more whatever than yeah. Thanksgiving or Christmas. So I think that's the holiday that's probably going to be. And I'm debating, like, I don't, I'm not going to text him anything about any of the holidays. But when his birthday's in January, I have two months to think about it, but I'm contemplating maybe texting him happy birthday, which he didn't text me happy birthday uh, when I turned 40 this year. Um, But anyway, so yeah. And like, I was hoping that we could stay friends and like, and it it kind of felt like we were for a while there. But I almost think it was more like because we had to stay in contact Mm -hmm. until the divorce was final. And then it was final in April. But then there were some other post-divorce stuff that we had to do and blah, blah, blah. And then that was all done in like August, I think. But then we had a concert that we had tickets to in September. (laughs) We went to that. How awkward was was that? Okay, so, like, you know, we had been talking practically every day for months, because uh, basically the the timeline is I moved out late March. The divorce was filed in April, uh, final in July, 
that some post-divorce crap was final and done in August. Um, and we kept in touch, you know, probably because we kind of needed to, to kind of like discuss all that stuff. But then, and then I think even after all that, we kind of kept in touch a bit because we knew this concert was coming up. Yeah. But like, so we hadn't really hung out, just kind of texting back and forth off and on. Like I would send them because I got to keep the dog. So like I would send them pictures of the dog or, you know, whatever. And, um, but then, so we go to the concert and it did feel kind of weird because of, it felt like nothing had really changed. Like it felt like we were still married or something yeah. or kind of reminded me of being married and like whatever. Cause we would go to concerts all the time when we were married and then we like ate at a barbecue place before the concert, which we always did like anyway. And so it did feel a little weird. And, and then the next day he texted saying that at this time, you know, we basically need to go no contact for now. Yeah. Um, cause he can't see a friendship at this time anyway, uh, because he, and at the time when he said that, it's like, I understood and got it. Cause I was kind of feeling the same, but at the same time I was like sad. Yeah. And so it kind of, you know, I was kind of depressed about it for a little bit, but I really think that was the best decision because like, I feel like if we had kept in contact at least to the every day, almost that we were, I feel like you can't really heal and move on and get over someone and move on with your life and whatever until there is no contact. So, so, okay. So that was like mid September. So we hadn't talked at all since then until the night that the Rangers won the world <laughs> series. I did text them because he's a big Rangers fan. Yeah. And I texted him that night once I knew they won and I just said, congratulations on the win Rangers win. I know this is, um, you're really excited about it or it's a big deal to you and all this stuff. I know you're probably uh, going to get a t-shirt, you know, because he gets t-shirts for everything. And so I'm sure he's, you know, going to get his World Series shirt. And that's all I said. And I wasn't expecting him to respond, but yeah. I thought maybe he'd at least, you know, do a thumbs up on it type thing. But he didn't do anything. Wow. No anything. And so I haven't texted him since then. That was like the only text I've sent since, you know, for two months now. And so I'm contemplating sending him a happy birthday text, mm -hmm. just playing it like that's all it says. I might, I might not. I don't know. I've got a couple of months to think about it. But uh, I think beyond that, like it's not something I'm going to do the following year. Like I think yeah. that's going to be my last, if I do send the text, I think that's going to be the last text or communication I ever have with him until and unless at some point he approaches me. Yeah. Uh, Cause he was doing divorce care, which is like a, I think it's like a 13 week, you know, program thing to like heal from divorce. And I'm thinking that's probably wrapped up by now. Cause he was starting that in like, well, it was before that concert, so I'm thinking he started in maybe August. Mm. So it's probably wrapped up by now. I don't know. Uh, and I'm actually thinking about doing it, like, sometime next year. Um, I actually tried doing it in the middle, like, in the very beginning stages yeah. of our divorce. Uh, after I had moved out and everything. But um, I went twice. And I couldn't handle it. <laughs> like, I was fine. Like, in the class, I didn't break down. But as soon as I left the class, and it wasn't so much because of us and our situation. Um, but, like, it was hearing other people and how much worse their situation yeah. was. And me thinking, okay, like, maybe our situation isn't so I don't know. Like, just kind of getting all the thoughts of, maybe we can work it out. Maybe we can figure it out. Um, so after the second time of that happening, I was like, no, I'm not ready for this, <laughs> but I might do it next year. I think I would be fine with it. Um, then, but yeah, we should go 
to a party, a New Year's Eve yes. party. We should. Start our New Year's Eve fresh. Yeah, because I feel like, okay, maybe if I if I do go to a party on New Year's Eve, um, I mean, sure, I'm going to think of it, obviously, yeah. but it's not going to be as difficult yeah. as if I'm sitting at home, you know. So, yeah, we got to figure out, like, are we – are we creating one or like how, I don't know. We'll figure that out. Yeah. Um, or go to probably go to one that already exists, but like, I don't, whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just <laughs> like, it's just so crazy that we thought we were gonna like have this great thing that happened and it was going to be so much fun and we're going to do different adventures and and I wanted to do things I hadn't done before well you know what I hadn't done before I hadn't mourned my mom dying or my grandpa dying and I've done that so uh it can only go up from there right like <laughs> has yeah to, it has to go up from there. um and I mean, you're not a, you're not actually forty yet, so like no. maybe this was just a bad thirty nine year, but then <laughs> your actual fortieth could be which great, would be like all of next year. <laughs> oh, and I did find out. So, um, my you know my friend had cancer or has cancer, and um, she is doing better. So I will put that out there. She's doing better. Um, my sister, she had cancer. She had ovarian cancer when she was in high school or sorry, when I was in high school, she was 21. Um, and they said, Hey, since you had that, you should take this genetic test. We'll set you up. So she took a genetic test and she did not have a, um, a form of like hereditary ovarian cancer, but we did find out that she has this weird mutation thing. And it basically gives you a higher chance of having, melanoma and or pancreatic cancer so they were like okay since you tested positive it has to be something on your bloodline so your sister should get tested so i went and got tested now many moons ago um i had a diverticulitis uh flare-up didn't know i had diverticulitis i went to the hospital they ran some scans they told me just off off shoot they're like oh hey by the way you have this weird thing on your pancreas it's probably nothing but you should go get that looked at and I was like okay whatever well something else came up I decided to do that because my insurance sucked so I was like well I'll take care of this because this seems more pressing and then it was nothing and uh I went and got tested for this a couple weeks like literally a couple days after my mom died and turns out that I also have that mutation and so now my 40th birthday year is going to start with me going to like a crap ton of doctors. So fun times. Good times. Oh, wow. So yeah. that, I guess that means that you have the a higher probability for yeah. getting it, but you don't necessarily have it right now. Right. So. But what, you don't know that you don't. Right. So what the first step is, is I have to go see a. Um, skin doctor, I have to get scans and I'm probably going to have to do that every six months for the rest of my life. Um, and then also I'm going to have to go see a doctor that can do, you know, check your inside stuff like a gut doctor. And, um, my sister has one already cause she already went and got these tests done. Um, and they have to check my pancreas, do like a MRI, check it, see what they find. And if they find that weird thing on there, they're probably going to have to do more extensive tests and stuff. I mean, the good thing is, is that if there is a problem, granted, this was two years ago that I first was told that there might be a problem, but you don't think it's going to be pancreatic cancer. You know, I have to go get tests done and, uh, see where I'm at with my pancreas. And so the irony is that um, (laughs) (laughs) my favorite movie is Dirty Dancing. See, we're talking about movies. My favorite movie is Dirty Dancing. 
And I thought as a kid, I was going to marry, uh, John, uh, not John Travolta, uh, <laughs> Patrick Swayze. <laughs> and, um, I love that movie. It is my favorite movie of all time. And, uh, he died of pancreatic cancer. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh you know, there's only poetic in there <laughs> somewhere. Oh. Oh, oh man. So, oh, sorry. Uh-huh. Oh, and I was going to say one other thing. So, um, <laughs> like, a few days after we buried my mom, uh, and at her funeral, I talked about friends. Um, because she loved friends. I oh. love friends. We talked, we... Like she would text me random friends quotes. Um, And in my speech, I wrote pivot, pivot, pivot in there because that was one of the things she loved. Uh, It was funny. It got the room laughing. But anyways, that's besides the point. Um, When I found out Matthew Perry died, I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. Like that is my favorite show. He is one of my, like the reason why I watched it. Um, and I was like, you have got to be kidding me. This is just, <laughs> thanks a lot. 2023. Just, <laughs> yeah. The punches just keep well, coming. They say things come in, they, they say things come in threes, I guess. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I guess I didn't know. I didn't know that, that that was your favorite show and everything. Mm. Um, I've seen a few episodes, but for some reason I could never really get into <gasps> it. Oh. <sighs> I don't know if because, like, at my age at the time, and they were so much older, I think, like, I couldn't maybe relate. I don't know. But maybe, like, watching it now. Yeah, you should. You should try it. I might like it. So, yeah, like, the Matthew Perry thing. I guess we're on that topic, so we might as well talk about it. Yeah. If you want to. Uh-huh. Um, I probably won't cry like, again. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, that was shocking. Like, I mean, I even though I didn't really watch the show, I obviously knew who he was. Yeah. And so I was actually pretty shocked about it. Um, more so than the average celebrity death, which is interesting. Um, so I cried when Patrick Swayze died. Like, I didn't, like, bawl or anything, but I, I was emotional um, because I loved mm-hmm. him, and and literally, if you had asked me at five years old, who am I going to marry? It was going to be Patrick Swayze. Like I loved Patrick Swayze. So when he died, I did I did get a little upset, a little choked up. Um, I think when Heath Ledger, I didn't cry, but my roommate mm-hmm. did. She was like beside herself. We were watching American Idol, and it like popped up, and I was like, she goes, Heath Ledger died. I go, what are you talking about? She's like, Heath mm-hmm. Ledger died. I was like where are you hearing this? And it was like literally scrolling at the bottom of the TV screen while we were sitting there watching it. And she cried. And I was like, come Mm -hmm. on, put, get yourself together. Like, (laughs) I mean, it's shocking. Am I shocked? Yes, I'm shocked. But, and then when Corey Monteith from Glee, when he died, I didn't cry, but I was just like, what? That's so weird. Like what? How, yeah, how weird. Yeah. yeah, the Heath Ledger thing shocked me and then Corey Monteith. But then it's like, is the show Glee cursed or whatever? Because yeah. he died and then, and that was an overdose, I guess, right? Yeah. And then the, the other, other guy, guy that played Puck. Yeah, he killed himself. Yeah, he like hung himself, I think. Yeah. He was up for like, he was going to go to prison for like child porn art yeah. or something like that. And then Naya, I think it's her name. Yeah, is it Naya? Naya Rivera. Yeah. She, um, I mean, that's the weirdest one of all. Yeah. Like, what the hell happened there? She, like, drowned, but yet, I don't know. That was really weird. And they couldn't find her for forever. Yeah. Um, she was, like, on, for people who don't know, she was, like, on a boat with her son. I think it was, like, what, the 4th of July or something? Or some Memorial yes. Day? Or some, some holiday. Something like that, yeah. And, um, yeah, she was on a boat with her kid. Yeah, she was on, like, a pontoon like, boat with her son. Just the two of them, which, it just, that just doesn't seem safe. Like, 
Oh, first yeah. of all. And like the kid was on the boat and survived and fine. Like he didn't. Well, so but like, supposedly they were both in the water and she was helping him get out of the water and like a current got her. And she had enough mom strength to hoist him to safety, but she couldn't get herself up onto the boat. Yeah, that's what I heard too. But like, even that doesn't make sense because it's like a calm, it's like a lake type thing. It's not like the ocean. Yeah, but they, they can't have weird streams of water that can just like suck you in. I don't know. I saw yeah, something maybe about she it. Got- Maybe she got caught tangled up and so I don't know. Yeah. And then it took them forever to find her. Um but yeah, so weird. But this like one like the other two Oh sorry. Keep going. I was gonna say the other two, like I mean, one of them killed themselves on purpose, and then the other one an overdose, which happens like all the time. Yeah. So but then when she died it was just like totally random and weird and I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, oh, good. Oh, well, I was just going to say, bring it back to Matthew Perry. Like, they originally were saying he drowned, but then I don't know. Like, apparently, the autopsy doesn't show that he drowned. I guess maybe yeah. there wasn't water in his lungs or something. Yeah. And then nothing showed up on toxicology. At least, I think they did like more toxicology that hasn't come back yet, mm-hmm. but like, big things, I guess, that they would know right away didn't show up. Yeah. And they didn't find anything in the house, so it's like, whatever. Yeah, it's weird. And the fact that he's um, Morrison's son, or stepson, <laughs> it's just like, what? Oh, Keith Morrison? I know. It, I, I saw the video of, like... Like, I knew it, but I forgot it, that he was... Oh, I didn't even know. Yeah. And and then so I saw the footage of like Keith Morrison arriving, and it's like you almost expect him to be like tonight on date. I know, right? Do you know that he's the one that saw the body? He's the one that confirmed it was him. Oh, yeah, it's on his uh, death certificate that he was the pronouncer, I guess, uh, or not pronouncer, um, confirmed who the the person oh. was. Okay, and it wasn't weird. his, like, assistant or something that found him? Yeah. Okay. So I guess Keith Morrison must have been the first person maybe to arrive well, after. Well, it has to be a family member that confirms, you know. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's crazy. I I just, like I said, I, I no, no deaths really, like, shook me. Except for, uh, obviously, I knew uh, Patrick Swayze was sick. Um, but this one, I I mean, yes. Did he have drug problems in the past? Yes. But he's been sober. And, mm-hmm. you know, just living his life. Playing pickleball. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering, maybe it was like a heart attack or something. Cause like, That's what I think it was. Yeah, because apparently he was playing pickleball that day, and normally yeah. he plays for two hours, but he only played for one hour. And I've even seen footage just here recently of him walking back like to his car, I guess, after playing. Like, he stopped playing because he was too tired. And then this video shows him walking back, and he looks like he is not feeling well. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen that video. Um, but... Yeah, he clearly wasn't feeling well. Also, Bob Saget dying oh, randomly. That okay. got me too. <laughs> and that one makes absolutely no sense. But the the way it like what was the deal? Like he had um It said he hit it his head. Like almost, yeah, like he had head trauma, almost like he'd been beaten up, but yet there was no there was no sign of entry, but a video camera footage, whatever, didn't show anyone coming in or out yeah. of his room. So that's why they said he must have hit his head, something in the room. But yet they didn't find any blood or mark. It, it sounded like they couldn't find anything 
that was really obvious or clear that he. Well, Natasha Richards, hit she hit her head on a airplane. Like they had some, uh, I don't, I don't remember if there was turbulence or she was getting off the plane. You know, she was married to uh, Liam Neeson. Um, okay. When was this? This was, oh God, somewhere in the 2000s. But they were. I don't know if I heard about it. Yeah, they were getting off a plane or they were on a plane going on a ski trip or something. And she hit her head and she thought she was fine. She went about her day. She went skiing. And then she like passed out that day and never regained consciousness. And she died because uh, of trauma to her head. She just didn't realize that she was that, you know. What did she gone. hit it on in the plane? Um, I don't remember, but it was just like a, like a concussion basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it happens. Yeah. It's so weird. The older you get, the weirder ways you can (laughs) get hurt. (laughs) And then like, have they ever said why Ray Liotta died? I don't know that we ever found that out. I thought he was sick think so i used to play trivia at that time um and there was a team that had like i can't remember exactly what their name was but it had ray leota's like name in it and i always thought it was so funny and uh, i can't remember what it was but every time i hear ray leota i think of that trivia team (laughs) and then aaron carter well um yeah yeah. He also died. A lot of people die in the tub or in yeah. or in the pool or in the ocean or in the lake. Like a lot of water deaths, it seems like. But. Yeah, it's weird. I'm so glad this is such a uplifting episode of the podcast. <laughs> well, this a lot of deaths. <laughs> The two kids talk and flicks podcast is kind of like because these are like uh, actors and yeah, this is the two chicks part. (laughs) Which (laughs) actually, this gives me time to talk about this. Um, I think instead of asking people to be on the podcast and asking what their favorite movie is, I kind of want to go through all the movies I have, and my Mm -hmm. uh, lovely co-host who is doing her own thing right now. She needed uh, some time apart, which is fine. We still work together. I still see her. I still talk to her all the time. But uh, she just wanted to take some time and step away from the podcast. So I've been having other people on, and I ask them what their favorite movie is, and that's generally what we do. Well, I she bought me a lovely wheel one time so we could do some, like, wheel – uh, surprise stuff uh, what oh a wheel a wheel yeah like a spinning oh. brrr, do, 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 i thought you said a will no a wheel like a fortune and okay. um well kind of like a will too um but anywho so i'm going to like i i, I can't decide how i want to do it yet but i kind of want to do it by color so i want to put colors on the wheel spin the wheel and then whatever color it lands on i had to find a dvd that has that color in it and do it that way and just do random sarah collection of movies so okay i think Hmm. that's kind of what i want to do i'm tired of buying movies people keep telling me all these movies to watch for the podcast and then it's always like a movie that's not on streaming somewhere and then I have to buy it and it's annoying. So yeah, that would be, yeah, I kind of want to, I mean, I'm, I'm glad people want to do other movies. That's great. But like do movies I own or movies that are streaming somewhere that I don't have to pay $19.99 for. What is, um, I mean, aside from Barbie, cause we already <gasps> talked about that one. So aside from that, what have you seen? Any movies either in the theater or streaming lately that are like new ish? Yes. <laughs> um, one of them was the 1999 one, um, 
but we never got to record it because my mom died. <laughs> 1999. Yeah, it was $19.99 for me to rent it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Because it it was a newer movie. And we have yet to record that episode yet because I had to take a break. Um, I saw Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, is it good? But I fell fell asleep during it. (laughs) How'd you fall asleep? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it was fine, but, like, I went to see it with a friend, and, like, I fell asleep, but only for, like, I mean, it was definitely no more than 15 minutes, maybe yeah. five, I don't know. But when I woke up, I clearly had missed some important things. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, wait, that guy is, like, you know. Um, did you hear that, like, Chuck E. Cheese? You froze. Animatronics. What? You you froze. <laughs> no audio was coming out or video. Um, no, but you said that they uh, are getting rid of their animatronics. Yeah, Chuck E. Cheese yeah. is. Yeah, I heard that. And and you know, I don't think they ever said it because of that movie. The the. Movie is based on video game. Yeah, I was listening to the radio and they were talking about it and they said it was because of the movie. And they're like, but that oh, doesn't what? make sense because there's been a video game for years and that never mm. bothered anybody. Um, but they said, I think this is just their reasoning just so they can get rid of it because it costs so much to oh. like keep up and like nobody knows how to work those animatronics anymore and they're just a, mm-hmm. a problem, I think. Yeah. So, I mean, the movie was fine. I mean, I've never played the game, so I, whatever. There, um, is a, I wanna... there is a movie that I've been wanting to watch. It's called Red, Red, White, and Royal. I think hmm. Red, White, and okay. Royal. Uh, but it was a book uh, first, and I had wanted to read the book, but the book was expensive, and, you know, I couldn't justify it. Um hmm. But there's movie version of it. And basically it's the Prince of England and the Prince uh, or the, not the Prince, the first son, I guess they meet first. They hate each other and they meet and they like each other. And, Oh, interesting. You know, it's, it's like a gay love story, fairy tale. And I, mm. I, I've been wanting to watch it, but I haven't watched it yet. But yeah. Interesting. Is that on streaming or? Yeah, I think it's on Amazon. Oh, okay. Um, but we mostly just been watching Christmas movies because we've been recording. Yeah, them. I've been doing that. Yeah, I've been watching. Um, I watch Happiest Season. It's got Kristen Stewart and Aubrey Plaza. Oh, I saw that uh, a few years ago. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I've seen it twice now. I think I must have seen it last year and then this year or something. That but, didn't include you know, very... in last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, it probably did. Like, a whole bunch of things. Did, have but... you ever watched the episode? Did you, did you ever watch Will and Grace? Uh-uh. So there's an episode of Will and Grace, and um, they go over to someone's house for Thanksgiving and they decided that guys come out at Thanksgiving and girls come out at Christmas. <laughs> and this whole episode, they're trying to get someone not to come out and then she does anyways. And it's really funny. It, oh, that's, that is funny. Yeah. It's, it's hilarious. Huh. It's a really funny episode. Just hmm. food for thought. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Um, what else have I watched? I watched um The Family Stone again. <gasps> I which love I haven't seen forever. I can't watch that this year, I don't think. Oh. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot I, of I mean, uh, just- Christmas movies that we've watched, like the Hallmark ones, and we'll start mm-hmm. it and then we're like, Oh, this was a bad decision. Because it'll be like, my mom just died. And we're like. (laughs) Uh, 
Yeah. I mean, Family Stone, I mean, I'm, I mainly watch it for Rachel McAdams. I love Rachel McAdams, but I, uh, the, my, the, my favorite part is when, um, Luke Wilson and, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker are at the bar and she's dancing to that song. She's like, this is my favorite song. And she like sits there and she starts dancing to the all right when it's coming home. You gotta get right back to where we started uh, from. Uh-huh. I love that. That whole scene in the bar is hilarious to oh, me. Okay. It's like my yeah. favorite scene. The The movie that I watch every year is Elf. Oh, yes. I love Elf. Yeah. I love um, and I, uh, uh, Home Alone. Oh, yeah. Home Alone 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. Um, I Sometimes I watch Santa Claus. It's a good one. And Serendipity, which that isn't really a Christmas movie, but it has like a, yes. there's a period within the movie that has some Christmas stuff. We did that one last year for Christmas. Oh, okay. Because it's a good Christmas movie. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah, I actually wanted us to uh, have a... Um, a Christmas like holiday episode. So we should talk about that next time. Oh yeah. About our traditions as kids versus our traditions as adults. Yeah. Oh, I've got a lot to share about that. So yeah, that'll be a good one. I'm really excited. Um, We, uh, my dad normally makes rolls and he hates doing it and they didn't give me anything to make and so I was like well can I make the rolls and my sister's like that's really hard and I'm thinking I make cheesecakes from scratch how hard can rolls be is is this for Thanksgiving or Christmas yes no well we're gonna try it um this weekend to prepare for Thursday um, I'm hoping that it goes well and that on Thursday I can actually make the real deal. So wish mm. me luck. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? We're talking mm. movies and Thanksgiving. Well, yeah, I was going to, oh, I was just going to say that I can't believe the year's almost over. Like it went by really fast. What are you doing, Otis? It has been very fast. Oh, are you going to throw up? Uh, hold on. Dude, my dog threw Here. up today. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to get you on the floor before that happened. <laughs> this is 40. Yeah. This is 40. <laughs> Are we going to leave this in the podcast? What, I, I'll probably cut most of that down, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> could you, when he threw up, could you hear it? I couldn't hear it, but I did hear you say, well, don't eat it again. <laughs> my, Why do they do that? I don't know, but my dog threw up this morning or this afternoon as well. So... <laughs> Uh, I was oh, trying to get him on the floor and I just barely missed it. Uh, so he got it all over the couch. Well, that's you fun. Thing? You poor thing. You poor thing. Well, <laughs> I guess we should end it there. <laughs> and uh, we could talk again oh. later this week <laughs> or next week. <laughs> Oh.
I mean, okay. <laughs> you have some stuff to clean up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Otis is sick about this year too. Clearly, he had some stuff yeah. he needed to get out. <laughs> all, all of our our conversation, he was like, "I'm tired of hearing about this." <laughs> this is depressing. I'm, yeah. Mm. And it was like a whole bunch. It was like the biggest throw up I've ever seen him do. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Not great. Well, I hope he's okay. Guys, if you're still listening, <laughs> check out <laughs> our podcast. Uh, you can check out our Facebook page. We don't have one for flirting with 40, but we do for Two Chicks Talking Flicks. You can check us out on all platforms at Two Chicks Talking Flicks. And you can check out our TikTok for Flirting with 40. <laughs> or our Instagram, Flirting with 40. <laughs> And uh, until next time, bye. (laughs) Bye. God help us. (laughs) This episode was produced by Two Chicks Talking Flicks. Music was produced by Michael Girvani. If you liked this episode, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to be a part of the show, have a movie suggestion, or just want to give us some love, you can email us at twochickstalkingflicks at gmail.com. Thanks, guys. Toodles.